So this year, TSMC isn't just shrinking transistors. It's rethinking how power moves, how silicon stacks, and how chips scale beyond their limits. The roadmap from N3 to A14 isn't just about smaller features, it's about smarter systems. And TSMC believes it has the technology to deliver. So as I'm filming this right now, the TSMC Tech Symposium is taking place in the Bay Area. They're showing how these advances matter across devices, from phones to laptops to data center accelerators and automotive compute. And with AMD recently confirmed as the lead HPC customer for N2, we're starting to see how these technologies are landing in real products. Now, N3 is TSMC's current production node with multiple variants on FinFETs. But the next big transition comes with N2, their first node with a nanosheet transistor structure, entering production in the second half of 2025. Now, last year, they announced that the SRAM yield of that node was 80%, but today it's over 90% on a 256 megabit cell, and that's a strong sign of process maturity. The next variant of N2 is N2P, due in 2026, and this builds on this with 18% better performance, uplift, or 36% lower power compared to an enhanced N3 process. There's also a 15 to 20% density gain on that. It's a notable jump, assuming these numbers hold true across designs. Now the next innovation is backside power delivery, or BSPDN, which moves the power wiring under the transistor layer to reduce noise and improve density. Now TSMC is branding their version as Super Power Rail. They've confirmed A16 as a formal node in their roadmap. It's gonna come in the second half of 2026, and it's expected to deliver up to 10% more performance or 20% better efficiency. Then comes A14, this is new in 2028. It promises another 10 to 15% frequency boost over N2 and 25 to 30% lower power. Density also improves by another 20%. This technology also integrates NanoFlex Pro for layout flexibility. The Super Power Rail version of A14, bringing backside power to A14, will occur in 2029. Now, performance scaling isn't just about transistors anymore. It's also about packaging. TSMC's die stacking technology, SOIC, is already in production at 6 micron and will shrink down to 5 micron in the future. The thing is, hybrid bonding is already in production at 9 micron, and customers can stack any node on any node in the future. It will depend on performance and power needs. Now, in terms of 3D stacking, there are two types. There's bumped and bumpless. The bumpless enables the tighter integration, but at the higher cost. Looking further ahead, TSMC also has Sysmon wafer technology, the full wafer scale platform. The X variant launching in 2027 for all will allow up to 40 X compute scaling by placing logic, HPM and IO across a full wafer. Now, some chips upcoming are at 1000 watts and we predict that they're gonna go above 2000 relatively soon. So high power demands need new approaches to delivery and cooling. TSMC is integrating monolithic power management controllers, or PMIX, directly into the interposer, alongside ultra-thin inductors to raise power density. They're also using deep trench capacitors, high-density charge storage devices built into the silicon, and embedded versions go directly into the interposer. Together, these two can stabilize power delivery, and this is already in use in some HPC packaging stacks. Now, how popular are these nodes? Now, TSMC measures the traction by the number of tape outs, the number of chips that have been completed through the process. And they say that the N2's second year tape outs are already at four times the number higher than N5, the five nanometer process, at the same stage of production. HPC customers are now taping out their designs in year one or two, rather than year three of a node family. Right now, N3 remains the workhorse though, with, but it will have long -term, new long-term variants. N3X for high performance, N3A for automotive, and a new N3C for cost sensitive markets, like smartphones. N3C aims for a 10% lower cost per chip, and that's a significant factor in high volume segments. Now, when we look at the market, TSMC expects the US semiconductor market to double between now and 2030. That's from $250 billion today to over $500 billion. And while AI and HPC will lead to that growth, Phones, automotive, and edge compute will remain major drivers. The problem is costs are rising to develop chips, but TSMC's position is that better performance, efficiency, and packaging integration will make the economics work. Fab21 in Arizona will play a key role in serving US-based customers like Apple, AMD, and NVIDIA 
who are producing the most advanced chips in the US. So to wrap things up here, this year's roadmap is a shift, not in just nodes, but in how systems are built. Going from N3 to N2 to A14, from die stacking to wafer scale, the focus is on scaling power, density, and performance together. TSMC isn't betting on smaller features alone. They're building platforms and bring them to market with partners already on board.